Some people have asked me what I am using to discharge batteries for the battery test. Because if you're pushing 60 amps through something, uh, you're making a lot of heat and a lot of things will not like 60 amps going through them. And here I'm going to give you a closer look. I showed you a picture of this in one of the earlier build videos, but y'all seem like the kind of nerds who would like a closer look. <laughs> uh, just like I'm the kind of nerd who would build one of these things. So um, this is a piece of wood on top and I have a blade switch that I have I have just taken the additional step of screwing down to the wood so I don't have to hold the blade switch by hand I have to just hold this by hand when I'm doing the test but it's not the end of the world this is a 200 amp rated blade switch and um, so it's plenty for what we're doing the very first time I started doing these tests I actually just plugged and unplugged an XT60 and the first time I did that with a 30 amp load, I got massive sparking and I scorched the XT60. So it wasn't too happy about this. The blade switch uh, it does have some sparking that has occurred. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's sort of designed to take it. So that's good. And then of course the meter and the battery goes here and the real magic is inside. Let's take this off or move it out of the way. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Let's turn this around actually. So if you look inside, you can see I have in there a block of wood with wire wrapped around it. That is steel fence wire. And uh, I used, I have an electric fence at my house because I keep livestock sometimes. And uh, so this is just leftover from when I built the fence. And steel wire has uh, more resistance than copper wire. So if you use a long enough length of it, it, uh, it will not just act like a dead short. I've got notches cut in the wood, you can see there, to help keep the turns of steel fence wire from uh, from shorting against each other. And I've got these clamps that I clamp on. And the one clamp clamps all the way down at the bottom, you can see it there. And then the other clamp clamps on one of these leads, one of these turns, and the closer they are together, the more current flows. And the further apart they are, the less current flows. So I can get anywhere from like 5 amps to, so well I've done 60 amps and could go even higher. Presumably I could go way higher. The other thing is that in order to keep this from overheating, of course this will immediately scorch. And, uh, and so in order to keep it from overheating, you fill this bucket with water and then it acts like the world's most complicated tea kettle basically. And that's it. Uh, and then there's just this piece of wood across the top that's uh, screwed in to hold the uh, the block down when it was full of water it wants to float I made the boneheaded move of trying to add a screw through the bottom <laughs> to hold that block in place and after I made the hole I went uh you can't put a hole in the bottom of a bucket of water and expect the water to stay in you moron uh, so yeah so there you go that's that's it that's what we use um, I have to it's it's not a hundred percent repeatable I have to manually move the clamp around every time I do a round of testing to find out, to adjust the amperage. Um, I don't know why it's not exactly repeatable, but it is reasonably repeatable within a round of tests. In other words, if, um, if I set the clamp somewhere, I'll get 60, 60 amps, right? And then over a course of batteries, I tend to get the same 60 amps. So, and in the meantime, happy flying.